The Prime Minister has accused Christopher Luxon of dancing, dancing dangerously close to sympathy for the Parliament protesters. Ardern's comments came after a speech by the National Party leader declaring New Zealand increasingly divided over the government's COVID-19 response. Well, leader Christopher Luxon joins me now. Uh, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, Melissa. How are you today? I'm um, very good, thank you. Um, the Prime Minister, though, has called you uh, dangerously close to sympathy for the protesters. Yes or no, do you sympathise with the protesters? Absolutely not. National's position hasn't changed from day one. Uh, we do not, will not, uh, have not uh, endorsed the actions of the protesters. So how I do you feel you. about being labelled well, as a help. protest sympathiser? Well, look, I mean, I think, you know, the challenge here is that, you know, I think the Prime Minister's been quite disingenuous, you know, from my perspective, and I've been very strong from the beginning and very supportive uh, with other parliamentarians on this, is that the, the protesters have been abusing and, and disrespecting other Wellingtonians. If, you, if you're down there and actually see the treatment that residents and other businesses are getting, it's unacceptable. And likewise, as we've seen with the actions of the police are doing a fine job, uh, you know, yesterday are absolutely despicable. So we have no support for that, uh, and we've been very clear about that all the, day, all, all the time through. What I'd say to you is I think it's a bit disingenuous for the Prime Minister to say those comments uh, but particularly because all I was challenging was the fact that there is deep-seated frustration in New Zealand that fundamentally yeah. we don't have great clarity about where we're going with the COVID plan and just because you challenge the Prime Minister doesn't mean that you should be slated uh, as being you know, on one side of this or another side of it. Yeah and so you have said that New Zealand is increasingly divided so does that suggest that you think that there are a large number of people who do sympathise with them? Well, you, you have heard, no, actually, I think outside of the, the people don't accept the protesters, put that to one side, that behaviour is totally, utterly unacceptable. But outside in the rest of New Zealand, as I travel up and down it, it's very clear people are immensely frustrated. Law-abiding New Zealanders have gone off and got triple vaccinated, done the right thing, followed all the rules, but are really, really confused and lost and frustrated about where we are. You heard it just now with a, a small business person trying to work out how they navigate red traffic light settings. I was in Queenstown meeting with tourism businesses that are literally going to the wall daily at the moment and have no clarity as to when we're going to get tourists back in the country. Businesses yesterday that I was with that cannot get rat tests, you know, uh, people who've got their kids that come home as a close contact and can't get a rat rapid antigen test. We've been talking about these things for a long time and the pathway and what comes next isn't really clearly spelled out. The Prime Minister actually did a good job in 2020 laying it out and being very a very clear communicator. But since then it's been a shambles and people are frustrated and they're lost. Yeah, so we have just heard from Hannah Reid from Bowl and Arrow, uh, who says that basically if she closed her doors, then, then they'd be entitled to the business yeah. support. Uh, but what she said is that um, she, well, she called on Grant Robertson to drop the close contact restrictions. Would you do that? Well, I think, you know, the problem you've got is, is two sectors that have been really structurally challenged, hospitality and tourism. Events have actually had some support. If you're a DJ, you're sort of OK, but if you're actually in hospitality or tourism, it's really challenging. The definition of close contact needs to be really, really tight. Uh, but more importantly, the biggest thing that would make the difference, and I know I've been banging on about it for weeks and weeks now, is rapid antigen tests. Because in every other country, developed country of the world, you've been able to get a rapid antigen test from your supermarket uh, or from your pharmacy, and employees can actually just test to work. You don't need to have a definition of a critical worker. You actually want all workers to be able to test to work. Um, so, you know, I think that I think I think it's just it's just all these frustrations that are getting in the way of stopping people to be able to get back to some sense of being able to live with this thing and to be able to operate with it. And so a lot of it is these small actions that just, just end up not making a big difference. So you wouldn't do what Hannah Reid is calling on the government to do, which is to drop close contact restrictions, but you're saying that you you would um, you do think there's an issue with the number of rapid antigen tests available? Isolation periods are getting in the way big time and are starting to disrupt businesses like Hannah's and they're also going to disrupt logistics and supply chains as they are already. Uh, and that's because people just can't get a rapid antigen test and test and see whether they're good to go back to work. If you're asymptomatic and go back to work, good, you know, get the test to go. Uh, and that's the problem is we just don't have them here. We've got 7 million. Uh, we have only approved seven to nine suppliers. Australia's got 60 approved. They're still not happy with the volume that they've got, but they've got a lot more than us. Uh, and so it's just all these things that just means that we're just not prepared with the tool set that we need uh, to be able to uh, work our way through this next phase. And that's the frustrating part. That's what's driving people nuts. You know, MIQ uh, has been incredibly frustrating. But, mm. you know, why can't a returning Kiwi come back last week? Um, because we've got more cases in the community. We had 2,800 cases yesterday in the community, 15 at the border. Mm. Let's bring all Kiwis home. We don't have to wait to March um, if they're... If they're 
tested and they're double vaccinated they're good, as, as good a good as a Kiwi inside the country. So it's just being practical about trying to wake up each morning and say, how do you make this country work and how do you mm. unblock it so that people like Hannah can get on with their life so uh, and others. I just want to circle back quickly um, before we leave you to to the protest and Winston Peters going and visiting the and uh, meeting with the protesters yesterday. What did you make of that? Well, that's a decision for him, and I just wouldn't support that at all. I, as I said to you, we are rock solid in opposition to the protesters. The behaviour down there has been utterly, utterly shameful and unacceptable. That is not how New Zealanders treat each other. Um, if you're protesting on freedoms and you impinge on freedoms and you abuse... you know, this So should he, on, should he have met with them? Uh, he shouldn't have met with them, no. Okay. National Party leader Christopher Luxon, thank you very much for joining us this morning.